So hi everyone, and welcome to today's tool session. Uh, my name is Sparkle. I'm one of the design coaches this summer, and I'll be working with you. Um, today, me and I'll also be facilitating. We're going to be going through some of the main tools and apps that we'll be using to manage our projects this summer, build community, and just jump into the ideas and stuff that you guys will be doing. Um, and so we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Okay. So for today's agenda, we're gonna go through, we're gonna do an icebreaker. We're gonna pair off into groups. We're gonna go through the Zoom norms. We're gonna do an overview of Slack and do an interactive tour so you guys can get familiar with that particular app. We're gonna take a break from that. And then we're gonna go into one of our other apps, which is gonna be Mural. We're gonna do an overview of that, a tour and a little fun activity as well. And then we're gonna go into Google Drive and you guys will have your next set of steps and things to proceed with for the rest of boot camp this week. Okay, so for the icebreaker, uh, you all will be paired off um, into little breakout rooms. And in your breakout rooms, feel free to reintroduce yourselves if you haven't already met the people that you'll be paired with. Um, share your names, your pronoun, and then pick three of the six prompts that are up. And I'll also link the questions um, in the chat so that you'll have them once you break off as well. And then we'll come back together as a large group. And if a couple people want to share out something interesting they learned from somebody else, feel free to do that as well. Okay. Would anyone like to share anything they found out interesting about their partner, an icebreaker? Um, so Jun He, is that how you say it right? Or is it Jun He? Jun He. Jun He. Um, he has he, him pronouns. And if he could be the animal that best represents him, he said an elephant because he thinks they're like really chill and have good vibes. So yeah. Jinhee, what, what did you learn about Sirkuti? Sorry, Sirkute. Sirkute, thank you. <clears throat> um, if she could pick up a new skill in an instant, um, it would be to learn how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> That's a fun one. I'd actually like to do that. Um, I was paired up with Kate, and we both resonated that a cat would best, best represent us. We both are cat people. So. I do find that people either have really strong feelings about cats, like they're either all in or they are just not a fan. Um, I have a long-haired cat, but let me tell you, the amount of vacuuming and the fur buildup, um, it's a little overwhelming. But I know some people really despise cats. I want a lot. I'll be a cat lady and I'll be proud of it too. So there's that. Okay. Would anyone else like to share? Yeah. Um, I learned about Kate that she went on a trip to New Mexico, like a road trip, and she ate like this cool stew with egg, um, which was like one of her favorite, I think, food combos. I think that was the question. But yeah. And Ria, I really liked the skill that you chose, or like if you could pick up one skill, um, she would be, and she used to share her pronouns, um, like an empath, or like be able to pick up on people's emotions really intuitively in any setting, which I thought was very cool. I learned that Jane wants to learn how to knit so she can do that while her girlfriend knits because she hates just like sitting there and not like knowing what to do. And then I also learned that Jordan is a wizard and he's waiting on his acceptance letter to Hogwarts. And so, you know, I don't know, man. Guys, I'm Gryffindor, duh. Me too, Jordan, we're in the same house. Besties. Okay, yes, we're going to Narnia, going to Hogwarts, uh, and we have a few more things to, to jump into. So 
Uh, up next, just to give some context for today, why are we having a full day dedicated to, to tools? Um, well, you know, the great thing about this remote um, community is that we're able to connect with each other, but there's just a lot more learning curves or, or ground setting that's needed to make sure that we all know how we're going to be working together as a, a cohort. So um, as you can see, we've already been an expert in Zoom. We're doing it right now. And yesterday we took our wonderful uh, class photo, uh, which looks amazing. Uh, great job, everybody. Um, but uh, so in addition to, to Zoom and some of the tools that we're learning in just uh, a moment, we are really excited that these tools, and we want to make sure that you all know that the tools that you're going to be learning are not only accept, uh, accept applicable to the design process, but you can put them on your resume and use them in other jobs. So a lot of the ways that we're going to be communicating and collaborating, you're developing these skills and learning um, new software to enable you to uh, address any problem with anyone. Um, there are some learning curves on the tools that we're going to, to see, and that's okay. That's why we have a full day just to like have sandboxes to play in. And that's what this whole week is for. So as we continue, if anything is new, that's wonderful. Uh, please ask us questions and everyone starts uh, somewhere and might have experience and some might not. But just know if you already are an expert in this, someone might not be an expert in one of the tools and might be the first time using. So we're gonna start from square one, making sure that we're covering our bases and everyone gets the same foundational moments with us today so that we can continue and make sure that we all understand and, and have those opportunities. But if you are an expert, that's the other exciting thing. You can learn from each other and we're gonna have conversations and questions and we can help each other if someone knows how to do things and uh, keep learning from each other all summer. So again, awesome picture. And uh, the other thing that we want to preface this conversation is a great way to learn is to take notes. So if you have the ability to uh, have something to write on and something to write with uh, this for this call and, and take notes so you can just kind of remember the basics. This meeting is being recorded and we're doing this purposely so you have another way to document what we're talking about, what we're going over so you can reference it later. Um, but whatever is good for you to, to document, this is a great practice to continue for any professional setting that you might be in, uh, whether you're in a meeting, this always has something to write with, or a running note stock that you develop on your own personal computer in, in a place so that you can continually learn and, and develop and just have the, the documents that you can refer back to if, if needed. So I highly encourage everybody to take notes, but again, this is being recorded. And today is just for you to play in and practice using the tools that we're going to be going over. So the tools that we're going to be using this summer, uh, they fall into two categories. We're going to be looking first at the tools that we're going to be using to communicate with each other, and then the tools that we're going to be using to collaborate with each other. And the tools that we're using to communicate is a combination of Zoom and Slack. So first we're going to look at Zoom, and then we're going to look at Slack. Um, and the nice thing is we're already looking at Zoom, which is really exciting. Uh, so Zoom is a video conferencing tool. It's the FaceTime meets you know a business setting or just more opportunities. Uh, it's used going to be used for all of our calls and it enables people to use breakout rooms where it has recording capabilities and virtual backgrounds. Quick show of hands, and I know everyone's using Zoom right now, but uh, is everyone pretty familiar with Zoom? Used it in possible like remote classes? They feel pretty good already. Great. So again, you know this is a wonderful question just to to ask and make sure that um, you know if someone's good at it. Since you have some tips and tricks, someone might not know. Be sure to share those out along the way and um, taking the moment to dive into Zoom is, is really wonderful. So um, we start off, and you saw this slide a little bit yesterday, with a conversation for Zoom norms. So this is important for remote calls to just make sure, even if everyone is uh, pretty familiar, that we have the opportunity to define and let everyone know how we want to operate in the setting in this community. So taking a moment to define your Zoom norms is a really great way to make sure that um, everyone knows what we're expecting, what functions we want people to use, and make sure everyone knows how to access those. So um, I, uh, we're, our Zoom norms for, for these calls, again, we would love to have your video on, and I see most people have their video on if possible, um, and have your mic off unless you're speaking, so everyone is pretty muted. Uh, those are in the bottom right corner with the mic and, and video camera symbols. It's how you can toggle them on and off. Again, we ask everyone to have the naming convention first name and the organization that you're a part of so that we can have these virtual name tags. You can go to your face on the Zoom screen by the, the, the three ellipses to, to change your name. 
Um, and here's an example of that. You also can mute audio directly from those ellipses, pin a video. So if you, if I'm floating in a sea of people, um, if you want to find me, you can pin other people's videos so you know where they are. There's also an option to do the show or to hide yourself. Um, so if you don't like seeing yourself on the Zoom screen, you're able to remove that from the grid. Um, and that has pros and cons, so you're not necessarily distracted by yourself, but um, just you have to be extra careful to see if your video's on or, or off and just make sure you're tracking that so uh, you're aware if other people can see you. And um, so those are the functions available in that ellipses. If you're asking questions and leave comments, we've already been using the chat uh, pretty uh, well so far, and we're going to continue using that as a place to share out and, and respond to people. But if you're interested in contributing, um, using the Zoom Reacts is a great way to also show the virtual support and your interest in conversations. And those are um, by the reaction buttons here. And then you can raise your hand or ask people to um, respond to questions or encourage me to speak up or slow down. Um, and we'll be notified as, as we go um, forward. So those are all fair game. We encourage you to use them. Those are great tools to help us know how we want to facilitate. Make sure the facilitator knows that your experience is um, going well. We also have all the virtual backgrounds available for everyone uh, to use. And I see many of you already have them. Uh, wonderful. I switched out mine from the, the one that um, Heidi was using or is currently using to this now orange one. So it's nice you can change for this this year whenever uh, you want a new updated background. And uh, another um, best practices uh, around here that we want to make sure we're following um, is letting you know that there are closed captions available for these calls. We want to make sure that we are being as accessible as possible um, and that all people of different abilities are able to engage with us uh, in, in equitable ways. So if you would like to turn on closed captionings, there's a CC at the bottom of, of the bar and then there's a show and hide subtitles option. Um, and we're, uh, those are really great and, and they're really good at capturing um, the, the transcript in, in live um, times. In addition to these meetings are being recorded so that we can access them again, like we said, for documentation purposes, you can refer back to if you wanted to double check how to do a zoom function, you can come and see me do it. Um, in, in this video if it's helpful and those will be shared out in slack and we'll get to we'll show you in the tour where those will be appearing um, after all the calls that we have this term. So any um, questions comments concerns for for zoom so far. Great. Again, anyone has anything, just put it in the chat and we're all available this summer. Now I'll pass it over to Sparkle to tell us about Slack. Okay. So Slack is going to be the other communication tool that we'll be using this summer. Um, it's this merger between email and group text, and we'll be using it to share out tasks, resources, helping us with project management, and also just community building so we can keep getting to know each other. Um, before I get into like reviewing Slack. You know, I love to gauge like people's experience using it so far. Maybe like groups at school have used it or anything like that. If people mind, you know, raising their hands if you're familiar with Slack in general. Uh, okay. Okay. So most mostly everyone here. Okay, perfect. So this Slack tour will kind of be review for most of you. Um, and you might even see something new that you didn't. And so definitely just uh uh, we're going to do like a live interactive tour with Slack in a few minutes, so you'll be have a chance to actually engage with some of the features that I'll be showing. And so we'll go over to the next um, slide. Okay, so this is the Slack dashboard. Some of the key things here. Over to your left of the dashboard, you have all of the main channels. Um, you should have received an email with a link to join a Slack channel. And once you do that, you'll be able to see all of these options for the different channels that you can hop into. There's a drop menu and we have introductions, general, random, meeting recap. So you'll be able to go in and find anything you might have missed from the meeting, recordings, the decks, uh, resources, just sharing out things that you think might be helpful for you, your group, or just the general community you can do in there. Um, you'll have access to your specific team problem spaces channel as well. And then something cool with Slack is that you can actually create 
open or private channel. So if there's like a channel with only specific people, there'll be the little lock icon next to it. And then the open ones have the uh, hashtag beside it. And then one thing about Slack is, you know, as many of you are familiar with, you can compose messages to send to a whole channel and you can tag everybody, or you can specifically message one person and DM them. And when it comes to responding, you can either use threads, so responding to one particular message within a channel, or you can start a whole new message and possibly start another thread yourself. So, and that. so here is where, this is just a snapshot of how you'd be able to edit your preferences and just your profile for Slack. This will be another way that we get to know you. You have the option to upload a profile pic um, and then overhead. You also have the option to let people know if you're actually online at any given moment. So maybe you might be in a meeting, um, but you're still online. You can also set up where your notifications won't disturb you during any meetings. Um, while Ross was talking, I had to change mine down because I heard it dinging a little. But you have the option to turn off that so it's on do not disturb. And we'll go through that as well through this tour. And then you can also upload a profile picture and add anything else you think you want to add to sort of customize your profile for Slack. So now I'm going to share my screen and take us through a guided tour. Are people able to see my Slack? Okay, perfect. Um, so we're just going to briefly go through some of the channels here and what you'll find. So over again to the left, this is Quits and Expo. Um, down to general, if you just want to drop anything, questions or anything that you may have for the larger community, you can do that here. And, and then for introductions, there's actually a prompt in here uh, that I uploaded yesterday, just giving people kind of like a template for how to introduce yourselves and also adding more information if you like. Um, I see that Alora has already gone and introduced herself. And so, yeah, you can actually go into the channel. I'll demonstrate right here. I'm gonna respond to Laura's. You can add reactions to respond to people. You can also respond and thread to them as well. And so if you all have a chance to access this live, feel free to go in. Um, give yourself a moment to go ahead and introduce yourself. Let's see. Here in meeting recap, you'll find anything you might have missed from a previous meeting. Um, so you see like Joy uploaded the deck from yesterday's call going for the for boot camp kickoff, as well as just the deck and the video. So you'll have a chance to recap anything you might have missed or go back. Um, today's meeting will also be uploaded there as well. And then let's see. This is random. So if you just want to see how people are feeling, what people ate for breakfast, anything like that, feel free to drop in questions and just engage with people here. Uh, Kate actually already started one thread um, asking for people to share their favorite songs so we can kind of create a collaborative playlist. And so I already have a link here, but my song, I just copied the YouTube URL. So I'm going to respond to her. And the way that I did that for Kate is I, went here and I clicked on the little chat icon to reply in thread and it'll open up another dashboard beside and you can throw in whatever you'd like. Um, so feel free to do that too when you have a chance. And I also have a little prompt down here as well, asking people if they're more early birds or night owls in terms of your working. So feel free to respond with emojis or adding in a little extra context as well. You'll also have your own personal like YMCA team channels as well. Those will be private. So it'll just be access to you and your team. There'll also be the different problem spaces will have their open channels on here as well. And if you scroll down, you'll just have a chance to see anybody if you want to DM anyone. And then as I showed in the slideshow up here, you'll have a chance to set yourself as a way of like you're in meetings or pause your notifications and edit your profile. Hopefully this helps. Um, maybe it showed you guys a couple new little features of Slack. Does anyone have any questions or comments, thoughts? Okay. Um, I think I have a quick question. You mentioned the, the, y, the YMCA like private channel. But I don't know if I'm in that channel now. 
I should not be right, or I should be. Not yet. You're going to be receiving um, an invitation to that specific channel shortly. I'm running into a little bit of some tech issues, but it's coming. Okay, no problem. Just want to check. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Marco, if I wanted to send a message directly to you, how, how would I type that in the chat? So if you want to send a message directly to me, you can go down to uh, your direct messages. And if it's a message, if it's a person you've already been talking to for a while, they might pop up. But if not, you have the chance to like search out the person and you can send them a message. So if I wanted to send you a message, Ross, I'd put here. And it'll take me to our thread and I can send a message in there. Um, or if you wanted to send something inside of the channel, but directed to a person, feel free to like tag that person. And then write your message. Does that help? Yeah, I, that that tagging is, is um, really helpful for me to understand. So using the at symbol will ping the person that you're trying to, to reach and make sure they're aware of whatever message you want them to look at, it, it helps them find and can navigate uh, them to the area. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, for the next, we're going to take a five minute break. Those are our communication tools. So um, for these, you know, stretch, look up at the ceiling, um, move, stand up, walk around, grab some water, grab some snacks. Uh, and we'll come back at 11.35 central time, so about five-ish minutes. Um, and in the meantime, DJ Joy is going to be um, putting some music, but explore the Slack uh, while you're doing that to, to practice and we'll, we'll have more time all throughout the week to do that.
Okay, everybody, we're going to be coming back online in just a minute. Thanks so much. Um, in uh, to, to energize us as we're coming back, uh, if everyone could look at the ceiling, it's really important also in the virtual world to, to look up and stretch and be active. I know there's a lot of computer sitting down and looking. Um, so we're always going to try to combat that wonderful ways just say hi to the ceiling, say hi to the floor, say hi to the four walls next to you, do some shoulder rolls. If you have to like crisscross your toes and move them while you're sitting, just taking little bits of energy and, and moving and, and, and getting that is really important. So um, want to be healthy while we're working and, and make sure we have those setups as we're going. Um, so if everyone just shakes your fingers and your toes, we'll, we'll get back into this. Great. Um, and yes, definitely check out Jane's introduction, how to add the custom Slack emojis. If you go to the reaction, there's a place to add your own. Uh, if you pull in images, drawings, whatever, um, we can create those. So Jane, go, go talk to Jane about that. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen because up next, we're gonna talk about the tools that we're going to use to communicate. So let's see, we did our Slack tour. We had our break, welcome back. We're going to be talking about the tools we're going to use to collaborate now, um, which include a combination of Mural and the Google Drive. So Mural is a remote collaboration space. How many, uh, have people used Mural? This might be the one that most people might not have heard of before. Does anyone have any familiar with it, familiarity with it? If you could raise your hand, if you know what it is, if you've used it before, great. If you haven't used it before, raise your hand. Amazing, perfect. Yes, Air5, Air5 the camera. Um, so Mural is a digital whiteboard. This is a place where it's imagine if Google Docs meets a sticky note wall. So it's a virtual space that we can work in together and we'll show you what that means in a minute. It's great for visual thinking and, and mapping out and putting things together. And because of the basic elements and functions of Mural, you're able to create different possibilities um, of murals and use them for different things. So you're only limited to your imagination for how to engage and compose the various elements of a mural board into something that you want it to be. And this is gonna be where we're doing a bulk of our work this summer. So by the end of this, you're gonna be mural experts. And this is a really exciting tool because of um, the way that the working world is developing and the way that um, you know people were forced to do more remote working in certain circumstances. This has been a remote collaboration tool that has been adopted by many different industries and companies across the, the world. And so this is gonna put you on the, the, learn, the front edge of, of that vanguard of that, that new ways of working and you'll be super set up to have and have expertise and experience in these different tools that different industries are, are using. So this is a really interesting new way of working that you'll be experts in by the end of the summer. And I just wanted to start off by showing you examples of what I mean by a mural board. So a mural, again, it's this digital whiteboard and it's a messy, fun place. So you can jump in and just kind of put all your ideas, move things around, make connections. Uh, you can map out um, matrices. You can use sticky notes and, and write on them, color coordinate things, um, pull in images and create these compositions that allow you to, to move through. So if you're just jumping in, you can use it as a working space. And some can be used to create then connections between things. So you can use this as in instructions and ask someone to do things in and set up kind of digital worksheets, which is something that will work formats that we're gonna be um, using this summer in addition to the free flowing ideas. So if you're trying to create connections and show people and communicate information in this new way, it's a wonderful way of, of thinking and, and sharing. And some of these can be really messy. These are examples from other DFA studios using Mural. Uh, we use it across our network, DFAers. Um, like sticky notes, so virtual sticky notes work pretty well. Um, and you know, you can bring in images and build relationships and document, again, this idea of documentation, um, the stuff that you're doing in the real world and put it into the virtual world and then expand upon it. So it allows for new ways to continue working and sharing and, and um, capturing all of the work that you do and the ideas that you've developed. Um, and you can use it for fun things too. This is, I used Mural um, in or 2020. It's my hometown of Salt Lake City was doing a flag redesign contest. So I was asking different people to vote on various compositions that I was creating in that moment. So 
you can use it for, for personal endeavors, for professional ones, for teams and building. And it really is just how, how you can, if you can imagine putting it together and try to, to make it as usually as possible. Um, so th now that we've seen different examples, we're going to look at a similar just screenshots of things and we're going to jump into Mural and practice using it. Um, but this is what it looks like. We saw those examples of a Mural board, but when you jump into a Mural, you're going to see a lot of helpful functions and buttons that will enable you to do things and interact with the, bur the board. So this is a, a Mural board. On the left bar here, we have ability to add text, shapes and connectors, icons, frameworks, images upload files and go into draw modes. Here, you'll be able to access your profile to add a, a picture or change your name. Um, when you're in, you can also see who else is in that board with you at the bottom and you can react similar to the Zoom reacts. There's capabilities to celebrate and share and, and um, support your team. And you can see the little images of all the different people that will be in the virtual space with you. Um, the navigation settings, so how to move around in Mural, you can change the way that you zoom in and out with the trackpad or a mouse mode and use the, the viewport here to click and drag or the, the sliding scale to, to move around. And we'll get into practicing that in just a moment. And the top bar is also a great way for you to share, export uh, as a PDF if it's helpful for situations, add comments and see the comments that have been added to the board the history of when things were added and by who, uh, the search and the help center. So there's a whole bunch of like help and the hotkeys and the super cool tricks that make you feel like you know exactly what you're doing. Everything's available. So that question mark is something to definitely look into. And now looking into that left bar again, there's all the different buttons. And when we say text, it kind of opens up these different drawers where you can then pull those out and use into the mural board and, and manipulate them. So we have the text button, which uh, we know you can put text boxes or sticky notes and there's different sizes and you can uh, customize and write on those. The shapes and connectors, if you're trying to mind map or, or build connections between two elements, you can put those connectors or build shapes and change those as, as desired. Icons, there's a whole icon library. So if you're looking for stars or um, you know people or thinking or just something and you need to have a visual cue to get people to a certain part of your mural board those all exist and can be changed the color and size to what you want it to be frameworks is a function of mural think of them as like digital bulletin boards so you can stick all of your sticky notes on top of it and then when you move the board or the area um, all the sticky notes are, are move along with it so you can create movable compositions uh, images, it's connected to just Google image search. So you can find a bridge if you're looking for a bridge or a beach if you're looking for a beach, click and drag and, and embellish your mural with visuals, which is a really helpful uh, way, not just the words, but showcasing what it might be and what it could look like. The other one is the, the pencil, which is uh, enables you to go into draw mode. So you can have this nice uh, ability to, to draw and, and embellish um, what you're looking for there. So we just looked at the board and zooming out one, once we go into the workspace, similar to the Slack workspace that um, uh, Sparkle just showed us, where you have all of the different high level view and then you narrow into channels. This is what you'll see when you're in the workspace. So we have the ability to see all of the murals and, and navigate different rooms um, to access the, the murals. The rooms is like the folders for a mural and that's where they all live and you'll have different folders for different needs. So looking at this left bar, um, this is the breakdown of what everything is. The, uh, similar to the Slack workspace, the one with the blue YMCA logo is the one we'll be in the summer. Um, so you'll have that similar icon for Slack and this one for Mural. Uh, this is how you can toggle workspaces if you're part of one for a different project or use it for school. That's how you can sort through which one you're in. This is where if you just need to jump in and make something and like put ideas down, you can create a mural and organize it later. You can see all the mural boards here. You can see all the pre-made mural templates that they have to get started. So if you're trying to do an icebreaker or if you're trying to do a mind map, mural, the community has developed a lot of existing um, murals that you can jump in and start using from the get-go. Um, we have two rooms similar to the private and open channels in Slack. We have the private and open rooms in Mural. So you have to be invited to a private room in order to see it by someone who either is already in that room or who created the room. 
Um, so for example, these are some secret DFA rooms that we're doing some backend work that you don't, you won't see when you're, you're uh, in this workspace. But each member gets a default personal room um, that you're able to go in. So if you just needed to put some ideas down, um, you can jump and create an, uh, a mural that way. And then the open, mem uh, the open rooms are available for all members to see, and anyone can see the boards that you put inside of those. Some key terms before we jump into our tour. Um, members, that's, uh, there's two different types of, of people who use this. There's members and visitors. Members are you all. So as participants and YMCA affiliates and DFA friends uh, in this workspace, you are the people who can see the workspace side and you're the one that have the photo when you're in a board. So you saw my little icon at the bottom, everyone will have icon, or if you don't put a photo, you'll have your initials. So that's how you know that those individuals can see the workspace and access all the different murals. But there's also visitors. So if you're doing something with your community partner and you're putting on a workshop, um, they don't need to see the rest of the workspace, um, but they would be nice to have them work in the board with you. You can share that with them and they'll have an animal icon that enables them to collaborate in there. Um, but then they don't have to worry about seeing everything else and they can just do the work with you as needed. So it's a great way to build and work with people across distances and, and collaborate. Uh, just for key differentiation, Mural all capitalized is the company or the software, and then Mural lowercase is the board. So a Mural that you work in or a Mural board would be lowercase if, if you see those. Um, that's what they are. So um, before we jump again into the Slack, uh, or excuse me, into the mural tour, the one thing that we wanted to make sure that everyone considers is, so, you know, we're using a tool called, we're using Zoom so we can see each other and we're using mural so we can work in something together. And that might crowd uh, your, your um, screen. So being able to, to set up a half and half system um, where you can still kind of see everyone in gallery mode uh, and then you have the, the mural and, and can use those in tandem. We'll just take some practice to figure out what configuration works best for you. Um, some other opportunities, if you are calling in Zoom on your phone, um, potentially will free up more, more desk, desk space, or if you have the opportunity to plug in a different monitor to have multiple screens, that could free up some space to enable you to be in these different programs at the same time. Um, but the nice thing about Mural is the Zoom capabilities. So you can set up that stationary, like Mural is over here, and then you can zoom in to different areas and make them bigger or smaller. So it, it actually enables you to see a lot and, and work a lot in those. So this is a recommended setup to enable you to interact. And for this next portion where we're doing the Mural tour, uh, it might be something that you see what works for you. But now we're gonna jump into Mural. So I'll stop sharing this screen and in just a few minutes, we'll pull into another. But as I'm as I'm doing that, does anyone have any uh, overall questions? We'll jump through the workspace and end in a board together. Um, but I can more than happy to to look at um, a particular question if someone has anything as I'm going through this tour. So please interrupt me anytime as we move through this. Let's see. Great. Can everyone see the, the workspace and everything? Wonderful. So um, like we said, you know, we have all the different murals um, available to you. You can toggle between the workspaces, um, the opportunity for you to see the murals that, that you've been a part of or the recently modified. You can star a mural to add it to your favorite. So as we're creating something, if you need a quick place to put it, the templates, again, the template library is pretty expansive. You can see what other companies have created. If you're doing something to kick off a project or if you're doing a mood board, um, literally there's all these different categories of icebreakers to reflecting on your team's process. So it's really dedicated the software and this community is helping us think about how we can work together remotely. And uh, there's a lot that you can learn just by exploring these murals and putting them into your personal and poking around and seeing what's there is a great way to learn how to use the software and see how other people create murals. The learning option um, is if you're looking to, to navigate or have questions, they have a lot of their quick moments to, to look at and, and um, see what's, what's where. The private rooms, so we have our, our personal rooms, but each team, so you all will be invited to 
your own team room where we'll put uh, mural stuff and you can work in there and create murals in there for your whole team to access that not everyone else will see. And then we have the open rooms with the workshops. So uh, this is the mural board that we'll get into in just a minute. But down here, you can go to your profile settings and change your, your name and how you and the, the image that you have. So I'll ask you to, to move through all of those in just a minute. Um, any questions on the workspace level before we jump into a mural together? Cool. Okay, great. So now we click into a mural and it takes a minute to load and now we can see uh, everything that we have in here. So we're going to be in this 101 mural. We'll do a little bit more specifics of walking through where everything is and we're going to ask you to try it along with us. So I'll put this in the chat here, this invite. And if you have already set up your mural and we're following along um, and can find and navigate that workspace or to that workspace um, right now, more power to you. Um, but I also just put it in the, the chat here so you can click on it and jump into the, the workspace with us. And uh, as people start clicking into it, um, we'll see you know, all the different people that are are there. So we have the visiting spider. And if it's okay if you have the visiting function right now, um, we'll be editing and making sure that you have your mural um, set up so that you have the member uh, capabilities. So just check your email for um, that. Everyone should have been invited previous to this meeting and, and uh, able to attend and, and jump into to those uh, moments. So if anyone needs, uh, more time, yeah, just follow along and, and jump in. If anyone's having any issues, let me know. I don't know if this is only for me, but I it says that um, the page oh. can't be found. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm having the same issue. Uh, I'm sorry, everybody. Let's That's go. Okay. <laughs> So it's hard for me to get the chat sometimes when I try this link instead. I... So that link is not working for me either. Okay. Likewise, I think it's not working. See here. All right, I'm going to send in I'm going to send an invite to the specific one. I'm going to blast it to your guys's that email and let's see if it works through there that link. Oh, we got it. Sokute. You made it. Nice. Wait, did you share a mural? Hmm? What was that? Did, have you shared a mural or just having a slug in? I'm sorry. Yeah, so this should invite you just to this particular mural board. Um, does that new link work for anyone? I was still having trouble. Hmm. Joy, you do that one. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. No. That's okay. We want to make sure we work out the bugs early. So that's the other thing that this is for today. I think the one Joy sent worked, so. Joy, you have the magic mural touch. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, that's interesting. Is anyone not able to get in still? Yeah, feel free to explore. We'll be on the left here in just a moment. Uh, and if anyone, anyone not in? I see a lot of people. So as, as they're going, if you need any assistance, 
uh, just let us know as we go through here. But it looks like a lot of uh, people are in, so I'm going to jump uh, into what we're doing today. So uh, I'm going to ask everyone to follow me uh, and you'll see a request so that you'll see my Zoom screen on the mural screen on your, your mural. To unfollow me, just click somewhere and it will stop following me. Um, and I can release anyone as, as needed. But as I walk through, feel free to try along uh, with me by pulling things as we go into the try it here area of the mural. And you can practice manipulating the elements in just a moment. So again, the orientation murals a virtual workspace to help us collaborate together. Everything's automatically saved. We also have embedded the YouTube video of what mural is and their how to organize spaces in their help center. So if you need to open these, just double click on those thumbnails and it'll take you to their respective places. The three things that we want to look at today is how to move around and so how to navigate a mural, how to add content, and then how to edit that content and format that content to be what you're trying it, trying it, trying to make it. So you can navigate mural in many ways. You have the mini mural on the bottom right over here, and you can click and drag your area uh, of the mural to, to bring you to different spaces. You can zoom in and out by dragging. Um, if you uh, click this move mode, it turns your cursor into a glove to drag everything around, unclick that. You can also pan, hold space to pan and activate that function as you're as you're moving around. The zoom settings is really important. So if there's some weird, like in, not intuitive thing that is happening, switch and play around with trackpad mode and mouse mode to see what combination works best for you. Uh, I actually use mouse mode with my trackpad. So it's really, again, up to you to figure out. I do happen to have a mouse that I use sometimes, but I also primarily use um, one or two fingers with the mouse mode on my trackpad to see what I'm, I'm comfortable with. So figuring out how to move around, a lot of it is, is the hold space and drag function. Um, or if you have mouse mode, it's click and drag automatically does the, the panning. So um, those just figuring out how to move around and zoom around. Feel free again to, to follow along or try it yourself. Um, we did all the zoom settings and then the outline icon on the top right is is another helpful feature so we that is the creator of the mural is pre-populated the outline you can click on the outline which is this top function here and then click on the different areas that they've put and added to the outline to take you directly to a part of the mural to see everything that's there so it's a great way to like snap to the general area and then you can zoom in on what you need it to be the top area, again, we saw the outline, but you can see the chat function um, to say hello and, and chat with other people in the mural and it saves the history of that. Um, you can uh, see the comments uh, that are added and we'll show you how to add comments in just a moment, but all of those appear here. The history, you can see when everyone joined, uh, it looks like everybody is here and, and how, uh, all the, the history that went into creating the mural lives here. So if you're really interested, there is an order of operations. Uh, you can see the history. We looked at the outline, the search function. So if you're looking for a name of something like the try, uh, try it here, it grays out the things that it no, it can't be. If you're looking for things by color, um, you can look and zoom around and it will show you those those areas and help you quickly identify where you need to go. And then the help center too, you can see the chat go to see all the shortcuts. There's a lot of different shortcuts available or some some quick tips and and see what's new in the, the, the workspace. Again, visitors don't have access to all of the top part features you can uh, direct and, and manipulate the layers. So if you don't see everything right now and you happen to be in a visitor mode, once you're a member, you can start to see the differences that are available to you. Perfect. Any questions about navigation? Sweet. Adding content. So the left bar is key to adding content. And this is the fun part. So do it along with us. You can pull out text um, and titles and, and edit them to be what you need and then manipulate them to be bigger or smaller. So you can click and drag things directly. Here's where one of the comments live. Um, so that will appear now in the comments and you can write hello 
So you'll click and drag. You can do a sticky note to, to, to write what it is, and you can manipulate the size of, of those as we go through. I'm really preferential to the five by three sticky note. It gives you a little bit more room to write in than the, the square one. So I tend to, to create that as the default that I use. The circle sticky notes by different color are available here. And then once you pull it off, it does have that text um, bar available for you to, to write in. And then now that we have some things, you can click and drag a connector. And Mural's pretty intuitive. It gives you some anchor points to connect things to. Um, and you can manipulate those. And it will move along with you once it's secured to an anchor point. And there's a lot of different ones that you can use to create curved, you know, um, oops, curved connectors and manipulate those to be what you need them to be. And again, it will continue and intuitively adjust. Shapes, um, wonderful shapes, click and drag size. You can add background colors or um, order colors to it to create what you want it to be. Um, and then toggle the connector points on and off. Up next, we have icons. So if you're looking for something that you want to, to put and have a nice graphic element, you can click and drag and manipulate those to be whatever color you need it to be and, and move them together and create compositions that way in relationships. Uh, and then frameworks. This is kind of a unique to mural feature. The quickest one is the, the layout for, portion. And these are the, the virtual sticky note boards or the, the bulletin boards. Or as you highlight something and you want to put on on that board, it will turn into this pale blue, and then you can drop it. And then when you click to, to move the board, it moves all the elements that are on that board. So you can keep adding sticky notes and arrange them as, as you want and name it to be Area 51, for example, um, and change the, the colors of, of borders and move and everything stays on there. And the nice thing with areas too, you can arrange the elements to be pre-populated as a, a grid and snap everything to each other. So you can start messy and then clean it up later and adjust the size and scale to create more areas for people to add different things to those. There's also um, areas that have um, icons or, or features already a part of them. So if you're looking for a grid and you're trying to uh, then put a sticky note on that grid to compare, uh, you can manipulate those. And it, again, it will still have everything composed and stick to it. So there's a lot of different types of grids from bullseyes to just lines. And then there's some pre-template populated ones as well um, for design functions, for business, uh, all the way to calendars that you can use for week by week or the month of, of the year. And then you have images. So if you're looking for uh, a bridge, you can click and drag and put that directly into um, this, you can also click and drag images from your desktop and put them on the, the mural. So if I happen to have, a, I don't have anything on my desktop, so I apologize. Um, but you can just click and drag and, and drop images directly onto the mural uh, to place them here. Or you can import images and from your computer or from other places that you have those stored. Uh, the content library is kind of preset um, functions that you can like save a composition and then make it easy to, to look at later. We are not going to use that that much. Again, the file function we looked at. And then the draw function, it looks like a lot of different people are already in here creating drawings, but you click it to activate and then you can change your, your uh, pencil or your marker and create beautiful compositions. Be sure to click the done drawing function to exit it. And then once you're done, everything that you drew turns into a shared uh, composition and turns into its own element. Great. So it looks like a lot of different people are adding a lot of different things. Any questions about where to find the, the um, adding content to the mural board? Sweet, lovely flower. I don't know who did this, but wonderful. Everyone's an artist. Uh, and so now that we've done these, we'll just take a minute to look at the formatting that comes with each of these. So if I add a sticky note, um, and the other way to add a sticky note is just by double clicking, and it will automatically populate with like the previous formatted sticky note that you, you used. Um, once you highlight something, you have the ability to switch to sketch mode and, and draw directly on there and um, click off of it to add your drawing to it. 
Um, and now I don't want to do that. Um, but you can toggle between the draw mode or, or um, the type mode. So switch to text, but it looks like it deletes everything. You can make the text bigger, um, bigger by clicking a lot or smaller. Um, you can make everything bold, italic, script through, adjust alignment. Again, borders, change colors. You can add a link. So if I go to um, design for america.com and you just copy and paste the URL into um, that, that area, it creates a little button that will now hyperlink things too. But you can also just click copy and paste the URL and paste it directly onto the mural and it creates those interactive thumbnails that you can then link to and, and um, adjust as needed. Um, but yeah, the, and that's the, the top bar that just appears and switch things to different sizes as needed. If you right click, again, some of these are, are variable uh, based on what you, you've seen before. You can show info and see who modified, add the link to the sticky note or see what the link is. Add a comment. This is the other way to add a comment that appears in that comment area. Uh, duplicate, lock things down. Some features, again, outline um, may or may not be available depending on your, um, your availability. So it looks like, love that. Um, everyone is able to, to see and, 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 and put everything together. Any questions about all of that stuff, just kind of playing around. We have a sandbox. Uh, any questions before we jump into an activity that we'll do together? Cool. OK. So keep adding things and practicing and, and take time uh, this afternoon or, or later uh, this week to explore Mural. But we're going to jump to the right over here um, and try an activity together called mockups. So this is, again, we're going to put our design thinking capabilities to the test and practice using Mural. Sparkle is going to lead us through this. So um, I will uh, continue sharing my screen up until uh, the point, but then you can practice. Uh, well, I'll stop sharing my screen now so everyone can just be in the Mural and, and try it when you're not watching the screen. Um, Sparkle, do you want to take it away? Yes. OK. So this is a mock-up activity. Um, so there's a group, there's like a lot of idea, idea boards at the bottom. So everyone should be able to like to populate wherever they want. Feel free to put your name in there um, to identify where you want to put out your ideas. So in a second, I'm gonna remove the card and you'll have a random audience. There'll be a need and a limit. And so you'll have three minutes on the timer to populate your idea board with as many things as you want, as Ross well, showed you all before, you have the option to make post-its, you can draw, you can add images, anything that you feel best communicates your idea. Um, so let me... Does anyone have any questions? Where we are, what we're doing? Cool. Okay. Well, I'll give everyone a moment to make board and... Will people just give me a thumbs up once you're ready and situated? All right, so I'm going to lock. All right, I'm going to remove the card. And we'll go through it before I start the timer. So your audience is athletes and the need is that they want a way to make eating more fun. And so the one limit is that you have to make it easy to clean up the mess, I suppose. And so that is the challenge. I'm going to start the timer. And you all have three minutes to go ahead and create your ideas inside of your board. 
And I think the timer should make like a sound once it's up. So you'll also get a chance to see what that's like, because this is also another feature that you can use for Mural. So, and we will begin. We got one more minute. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. Okay. This looks great. I like the variation in the way people put their ideas up. Have like post-its, images, drawings. This is really great. Okay. Would anyone like to share out what they came up with with the group? I can share mine. I'm very proud of mine, actually. So I don't know if you guys have heard of the Spy Kids movie. And you guys remember that one scene where they're in that little basement of their parents, like, spy room. And they have the little, like, it looks like popcorn bags. And they open it. And you put, like, water and it heat it up. And it turns into a full meal, right? So here's what I'm thinking. I propose, and instead of using the unhealthy meals, like McDonald's and Burger King and other resource and other, like, foods in there, we take our healthy, balanced meals, dehydrate them, put them in these bags, and we can even use you know, environmentally friendly materials to make said bags so they're easily disposable, easily able to clean up. And all we do is you add some water, put it, pop it in the microwave and bam, you have a full fledged balanced meal, easy and ready to go. I even have the link there to the video for an example on how this meal is done. And so what you see is you get a balanced meal. It's very fun to eat, it reminds you of your childhood and that leads to healthy and happy athletes. I love this idea. I, I saw when you started typing the Spy Kids, I said, oh, she's onto something. I love that scene from that movie. It was perfect. I'll share. Mine's not as compelling, but 
me try to paint the picture. Um, so this is George. He's running on this little path here. And what I was trying to go for is, you know how they have those like armbands, but for like for the iPhones, but have that smaller, like a little basket that's on the side. You could fit a little sandwich or some trail mix or something in there. Mm -hmm. That was my idea. Sarkute, I'm really interested in your drawing. Okay, so my idea was basically like sort of like a, a, a rocket launcher for food. And like, I know to be clean, but like athletes, like they run around, right? So they can like precisely like, like you know, you throw a football and then you run and catch it. You launch the food and then you catch it with your mouth. So I hope that'd be fun. It reminds me of those like elaborate like chip or like uh like no it was, a, it was like chip it's or like not the cheese it's but smaller like commercials and like they were very elaborate ways that people would throw things up and catch them in the mouth and I do think yeah the sniper accuracy of the track style would be very appropriate for it. I also want to be on the like shooting end of the burger <laughs> I feel like that'd be fun <laughs> I feel like that'd be a perfect idea for people who might like be running a marathon or like long distance and they don't want to take that break in between, but they'll get a snack still. I think we have time for one more before we finish up today's session. I can share mine. Um, so I, I wasn't able to draw, but um, the idea is that athletes, what is fun is competition, right? Um, everything, uh, timing is everything. And so I thought of a watch that counts down every time athletes start eating so that they can, they can be a winner every time. Yeah. And then what's your serious idea? <laughs> Um, so my serious idea is that uh, chopsticks um, can prod it into food. And so there can be like a sensor at the tip of it where it sort of measures the macronutrients of it and sends the information to your phone so that athletes don't have to ca calculate all the calories or sodium intake um, and it's automatically uh, put into their phone. Okay, Junhee is like in 2033 and we're all here in 2021. Great. I'm excited for these space chopsticks, Junhee. You can eat them on Jordan's spacecraft, um, which well, sounds wonderful. Okay, everyone, that's uh, overview from your. I know it's it's a lot if it's it's your first time. Again, there's a learning curve, but I uh, thank you so much, and we we're able to create all these wonderful ideas and practice our design skills together, even if it's your first time using this particular program. So. Kudos to you for uh, helping us uh, jump into that new space. And um, the last thing that we're going to, to look at is um, a few more things, but we're uh, about two more minutes left. Uh, the last thing we wanna talk and um, shift gears in is to Google Drive. So this is the last of the tools that we're gonna look over today. This is a cloud file storage. I'm, uh, I'm wondering how many people are familiar with Google Drive and, and feel confident using have, have used this software before. Has anyone not used Google before? Um, cool, it seems like most people have, but again, just in case, uh, it's a place where you can create different kinds of files from documents to presentations. This particular deck that you're, you're viewing right now was built in Google Slides. Um, you can also create forms and, and a lot of other um, default uh, functions that are available to you. You can work on those then with your team or other stakeholders. Again, it has like Mural, that collaboration element, so you can work in the same document together. And we have uh, folders in this availability to you to use for project work as needed. Um, the overview of the Google, uh, Google structure. So when you're logged into Google Drive, you need the Google email to access, but then we will share a folder with your email. Uh, and this particular folder called the Change Makers Team folders will exist in the shared with me portion of your particular 
um, Google Drive workspace. And each team will have their own um, particular folder for you to um, create Google documents, slides, et cetera, and, and share those with others and work on them together as a team. The way to create is you go up to the new uh, button up here, and then you'll be able to select which type of format um, and document you want to create. There's one that's really common is like uh, creating a Google Doc. Um, this is akin to Google, like Microsoft Word. Uh, this is what you'll see when you create a, a new document. You'll have the ability to title it and share it and start writing ahead. So this is like verbal um, composing uh, and, and story writing. Great for notes. Google Drive creating slides. You'll have this opportunity to um, create the, the templates and themes and present out. And you're going to be using this throughout the, the term for crits and for expos. So creating slides and telling your project story as you develop and receive feedback. So this is a, a, a an, another way to collaborate with others is through the storytelling and this, this function. And then creating forms to interact with uh, different stakeholders. You might need to create some sort of survey or just gather information from other stakeholders that might know or can provide you different ways. So this gathers up all the information through one place for you to synthesize at a later time. Um, I'm going to pull up the folder for everyone to see. And I have that here for people. Ah, great. So in the chat, I'll put that um, folder for everyone uh, to, to see it. Again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It looks exactly like that screenshot that we had. Um, you'll, we'll send the, in, and invite you to that with your email in a moment, but this is so you can just see and poke around. If you need to make things in there, feel free. Um, the, you all have the team YMCA, uh, of the triangle region available. Uh, so this will be your folder, currently nothing in there, but we'll populate with templates and you can populate and use this and create the different documents as needed. Um, for you to create and, and collaborate with others. So if we were to go and create the Google, um, this is the example. Oops. Hello. And then I need everyone to tell me their favorite color uh, for homework. This is very, very important work. Um, once you go and you want to share someone, share this document with someone, you have to just make sure the, the link and anyone with the link can edit and then you can copy um, and put that in the chat so that others might be able to uh, answer that question. So just making sure you're sharing and your sharing permissions are set so now it's not just you only, but taking the time when you're creating those to make sure that everything's organized how you want it and is in the place and then the share settings are appropriate so that other people can collaborate in. Again, it's interesting to see, like some people might be more familiar with Google Drive to see Mural, the kind of, you know, more to like the various ways that different elements can engage and then go to a Google Doc. It's a tried and true method of collaborating. Um, Mural is really good for thinking through things if, if you need that messy space. Um, and a Google Drive might be a perfect place for you to take notes or to, to finalize things that are more is a more traditional structured way of writing. So we're trying to provide opportunities and ways to think about how these tools might be used in different settings for different professional needs um, and in different ways and how they can collaborate together. Again, the nice thing with Mural is you can copy that link and put it in the Mural and also have that be able, uh, a way to, to hyperlink to uh, different structures and make connections between things or start different things in different ways. Um, and that is today's session. So um, are there any questions as we jump into or are starting to wind down this moment? Wonderful. Again, to recap, we looked at a lot of tools today, uh, which include the Google, um, we looked at Slack, we looked at Zoom, we looked at Mural and Google Drive. So before tomorrow, some to-dos that we ask you to do is to set up your Mural and Slack workspaces. So add photos, we'll be posting um, messages, explore those, um, and we'll have instructions posted in the general uh, channel in Slack. 
the general channel um, and Slack is the primary way that we're going to be communicating from now on. So um, just so you know, there'll be some follow-up emails if you still need to join a, a workspace or something and then follow those instructions. But the best place now to, to reach us is going to be in Slack. Um, you know, this week, if you still need an email, we'll respond to it for sure, but we're going to try to get into the best practice to, to be using that as the primary way to communicate with us. And familiarize yourself with the Google Drive if you're unfamiliar practice creating things. Again, this today's recording will be shared in Meeting Recap on Slack, so you can see the recording in the deck and reference it as needed as you're going through and setting up your workspaces. Um, any final questions, comments, concerns? How's everyone feeling? Did you learn something new today? Oh my goodness. Okay, wonderful. Um, tomorrow session is all about tuning. So we're going to take the tools that we've learned today and put them to practice in a new way. So we're going to be working together and give you all time as a team to create strong team dynamics. And that's going to be a session led by June He uh, and, and myself. So we are excited to see you tomorrow. We'll be using Mural. Um, so practice, practice that and, 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 and exploring and we'll be all set for tomorrow and make sure that we are good to go as we head into the weekend into the summer. Thanks everybody. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.